Morning from Hong Kong. Good morning to you. Welcome to this live stream. What's happening? Well, the markets are nice and green, which is beautiful. Let me show it to you here. Uh, where are we? There we are. You see, uh, we are up a half a percent on NASDAQ, S&P, a third of a percent of the Dow Jones. Volatility is coming down. Most things on the sort of tech stock screen are looking pretty good. This is basically a rebound. Uh, Lucid actually has some real news out. They're going to start delivering cars from October, apparently, which is marvelous. And the market looking absolutely happy with itself. Now, What's it all about? Well, uh, Washington is still uh, really the hot topic here. I guess we just simply went um, a little bit overboard yesterday with the pessimism. Today we've taken our meds and we are all feeling a little bit happier. That could definitely change. Powell is speaking today at some sort of European Central Bank virtual conference. That's never good when the man opens his mouth. And... We also do have some good news here from China. Power shortage is still uh, terrible, but Evergrande is making some progress, and I'm going to guide you through that. And of course, take your questions. That's what this is all about. So ask questions. I will answer them. Um, so in the chat here, all you got to do if you aren't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button, ask some questions, and then if you if you hate it afterwards, you can unsubscribe again if you really must. So. That's basically where we are with this. I should always say this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment only. So always bear that in mind. And I will make a list of all the questions that you guys throw out here. And I will um, I will go through them. So shall we start here with A.T. Feffi's question? Is if the U.S. defaults on its debt obligation, is it the end of the world? The short answer is yes. Uh, you need to get a shovel, dig a really deep hole and jump into it. That's basically the only solution you have if the US defaults on its debt. What would happen in reality? Well, most financial institutions in the US hold US bonds as safe guarantees better than cash, right? Pays you something in theory, at least. So if the US government doesn't pay on that, then the foundation and the backbone of every valuation out there, every discounted cash flow model, every idea of a zero risk uh, investment goes, goes up in flames. And that would mean it would be catastrophic for financial institutions, especially in the US, but around the world, because everybody holds US dollar bonds. And those dollar bonds would lose value very substantially. So people would basically, I mean, Wall Street would just knock itself over. It would basically all go into insolvency. And there'd be nobody to bail them out, right? Because who's going to bail them out? The US government that can't pay for anything? Unlikely. Is this a likely scenario? No. This happens every year or every couple of years, sometimes a few times a year. I think it's essentially the way that Washington politicians make themselves important. And it's just political wrangling, right? One side doesn't want to be seen to be raising the debt ceiling, even though they've been doing that for the previous four years. The other side wants to not just raise the debt ceiling, but also spend a lot more money. And, you know, it's just politics. I do think they're going to come to our, a conclusion here probably tomorrow, latest Friday, because otherwise the lights do really go out. Um, a U.S. government shutdown isn't such a big deal. We've had plenty of those before you actually start to realize that the U.S. federal government isn't quite as important as it likes to think. Uh, the world still continues, though in the long run, it does obviously affect things. Uh, you know, it, it does delay lots of stuff and, and lots of people don't get the services that they need. But a default on debt, that would be really, I mean, end of the world stuff. Absolutely. I, I don't know what we would do. Uh, I, I don't think it's ever going to happen. If it does, it literally is it's the end of the financial system. I mean, by Bitcoin, maybe that's what we would all do. Um, Kim says, hit the like button. I'm very much with you on that. I'm going to start writing down here so I don't forget. And I'll show it to you so you know I'm not fibbing. A couple of the stocks you are throwing out. Well, we'll definitely talk about Baba here because that's it, that's in the title. Uh, we'll talk about MU gladly. And Steve is sharing that NEO is up to 504 battery swap stations, which is brilliant. Thank you, Steve, for sharing that. And Jason, uh, brilliant on, on NEO. I have actually just recorded a video on that, but I'll gladly share with you my thoughts here live first for those of you who've tuned in uh, on, on NEO. Um, 
Uh, and Desmond, good evening to you. Uh, most lots of foreign countries hold U.S. bonds. I mean, China does as well. Uh, Desmond says um, gold, ammo, and bunker time. Absolutely, uh, that, that's that's really the only thing you can do then. And uh, Michael says good morning. Uh, smash the like button. Good morning to you, Michael, and to the goats. And Lucid, definitely Lucid is going to be on our list to talk about. Um, everything is green. Uh, Just going to watch, 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 watch. Says, cool, brilliant. So, okay, Baba. Okay, let's start with that because that's at the top of the list um, in, in no particular discriminatory order. So CIC is the largest Chinese investment bank. It's sort of semi-state owned. Uh, Morgan Stanley set that up, I think, in 1984 or 87 or something like that. One of the really early investments into China. They've since sold their stake in it. And they are typically pretty close, they're pretty close to the ground. They've been pretty accurate on, on their neo predictions, for example. They're pretty bullish on that sector because it is sort of state owned. So I, I kind of think politics plays a bit of an issue there. And they basically said they think Barber is going to miss their earnings expectations this this quarter, which is not what we want. And and let's just pull that up here. Baba. So Baba is reporting earnings on the first of November. So so 29th of October. So a month away. And they think they're gonna gonna miss it. They didn't I mean I haven't see, seen why they think that. Could it be the $15 billion donation or spend towards uh, you know greater common good? Uh, that could obviously be a, a one of expenditure where that would hit the um the the numbers, the bottom line uh, fairly hard. Though I do think people could could see past that, but maybe there is something else there. So I don't know what that is, which is why I haven't done a video on it yet. I'm still digging. I haven't found anything yet, but there is the CICC. Um they have obviously done a research paper. It's just that they haven't shared it with me yet. So that's basically what we're looking at there. So that's not particularly positive. And if you look at Let's have a look at 9988 in Hong Kong today because the Hong Kong markets are now closed. We've had a full trading day. We were down 1.7%. Not dramatic, but that does carry over, right? So that, that always does. Um, and okay, we're throwing out more tickets here, which is brilliant. So C. Uh, Palantir, how did Palantir only make it at, 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 at you know, number six? That's unusual. Elias is asking, uh, can a guy like me from Scandinavia learn about options, calls and puts? Um, Elias, there is nothing um, about the Scandinavian nature that prevents you from learning about options. So yes, of course you can. Uh, I do have a free course, so I would check that out first. Uh, go to felixfriends.org slash free options and you'll get uh, a good 10, 12 lessons and also some, some more guidance from me. Uh, we've also started a mastermind group around that free options course group. So do join that. Do check check that out, and then you'll see whether it's for you or, or whether it isn't. It isn't for everybody. I always say that. You know, it isn't for everybody. There is a bit of a technicality to it. There is a bit of a learning curve to it, but it is great fun. And when you are, when you are getting those income, um, you know, profitable trades, and you figure out which trades work, and you do them again and again and again, you you, you just start to enjoy living a little bit. Uh, okay, Nathan X Pang. Okay, brilliant. This is going to be one of these um, all over the place <laughs> live streams, which. I love. So I'll, uh, you can see my list here. And we've got C, yes, and thank you, C. The ticker is SE. Uh, I love ticker names. ASML as well. Um, Rudy is, 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 is forever bullish on Alibaba. Right? I, I appreciate that, Rudy. You think uh, Barber is lowering expectations and they're going to beat it. Well, uh, let's hope you are, you are right. Um, Okay, let, let's run through a couple of these here first before the, the, the list gets gets forever uh, long. Uh, let me let me take the ones I can sort of do off off uh, off the cuff here. Lucid have just announced, and I'm sure it's on um, on their news items here as well. Uh, here we go. This is it. This is what everybody's excited about. They, they said 
uh, that they are going to uh, start delivering uh, in late October. So they've started manufacturing uh, their luxury sedans, which is brilliant. And pre-market, people are loving this. It's up at $26, up 6.6%, uh, dragging ride with it ever so slightly, which makes no sense. But there we are. The market is a, is a strange beast. So that's basically the Lucid story. If you look at the chart, it's... Um, it still has its resistance up here at just under $28, and it didn't quite manage to break through that, even though we are now looking pre-market up at $26.16 or so. Uh, we are still, you know, not really, that's what we need to break through. We need to basically go to $28 for this to really uh, start moving. Afar says, you're not any seeing any earnings or dividends in my trading view uh, account, which is the website I use here. Uh, Afar, send me an email or drop me a message on the Discord and I'll, I'll gladly help you out. Send me a screenshot of what you do see and I'll, I'll, I'll help you out over there. Uh, that's perhaps better than uh, me turning this into a, a tech a support center for a bit. Uh, Philip, are you uh, kicking yourself for not selling Lucid at 60? Uh, you thought it was going to go to 80. Well, you know what? It, it might again eventually. I mean, Lucid at the moment, I looked this up today because I just did a poll star video. It's trading at six times 2023 revenues. Uh, Tesla, by comparison, trading at about 11 times 2023 revenues. So it's, um, it's, it's neither, it's definitely not cheap, but it also isn't like crazily overvalued. So I think really is a question of let's get over this hump of can they deliver cars? Can they bring out a substantial number of them on time? And will they drive? Will they go forward, not just backwards? And will they go up in flames? You know, that sort of thing. That's what people worry about with new manufacturing. And, you know, will they run out of tires or steel or windows or batteries or something, which is, is what seems to be happening to most OEMs at the moment. So those are kind of the risks. And once we get through those a bit, uh, things will improve. Now, Neo, uh, what's the good news on Neo? Well, they've made an investment in a blockchain company, which is um, run by the Chinese Automobile Manufacturers Association. Bosch is also an investor. And that's kind of interesting because it responds to, I think, government demands to... Um, anonymized data that leaves the car and also be able to track it. And blockchain, of course, is the solution for that. And that's what they have invented in this company. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, I, I don't think I have it open. Oh, no, I do. I do have it open. Here it is. It's, uh, it's called Zhonglian Technology. And the first part of that Chinese name means blockchain. So our little friend here, Google, says public chain. So that's essentially what they've invested in there, which is smart. I, I like that Neo continues through its private equity arm to invest in lots of things. Uh, also, as uh, somebody just shared, about 500 battery swap stations out there, and that number is going to continue to go up very substantially till uh, basically uh, February time, Chinese New Year or, or thereabouts. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, the stock is up in pre-market. Yesterday was a punishing day. Let me pull up for you Evergrande here. Can you see that orange line on the screen here? This is Evergrande. So Evergrande is making a recovery, which should be good for Chinese stocks and also the broader market. Why is that happening? I know I'm going off Neo topic here, but so Evergrande today agreed the sale of a stake in a Chinese bank they have to a state-owned enterprise. So the government is doing what we thought it would do, is they're bailing them out without bailing them out. So they're basically saying, if you've got some good assets, we'll buy them. Our state-owned enterprises or banks will buy them off you. That'll give you some liquidity. And we're talking here 1.5 billion US dollars. And that's not champ change for them. And so they can use that to get that cash flow in and finish some projects, get in some more deposits and, and, and possibly pay off some bonds or at least negotiate the, uh, the sort of termination of some bonds and pay people you know, a few cents on the dollar. So that's positive. And I suspect there are going to be more of these announcements coming. So the Evergrande, oh my God, it's all going to collapse and the world's going to end scenario seems to be not quite panning out like that. And that's what I've been saying, I think, for the last few weeks, that I did think there would be a, an indirect bailout, an acquisition of their assets, their land bank, and their sort of good investments. And why not, right? If you you know, this is a bank that's a reasonable bank. It's worth 
one and a half billion, why not just buy it? It's just the private sector doesn't want to touch it because, you know, everybody wants to get a deal when they buy from Evergrande. So the government's stepping in here and saying, okay, well, it's worth a billion and a half. We're going to give you a billion and a half and we're going to take it off your balance sheet. And instead, instead you get some cash, which is what you desperately need. Um, uh, Batuhan is asking Neo. Okay, Neo at the moment is trading at 4.1 times 2023 value. And let me show you this little chart here. I'm, I'm putting a video out uh, later today uh, on, on Polestar valuation, which is the GGPI SPAC. I should put that in here, actually. GGPI, that's the SPAC name at the moment. So the current Neo multiplier of 2023 revenue is 4.2, Polestar is 3. Uh, at current share price, say if NEO's share price went up to $50, then NEO would be trading at 6.1 time uh, 2023 revenue and Polestar still at three. Uh, for comparison, Tesla is trading at about 11. So uh, it's there, that's that discount there. Uh, Lucid at the moment is trading at 6.1 or thereabouts. So Lucid is at this point, 50% more expensive than NEO. But then it is an American company, an all-American company, so you sort of see where that's coming from. And I think it also just shows that there is a lack of choice for those wishing to invest in EVs, because otherwise a company with no track record of deliveries probably wouldn't be valued at, quite quite at that. Or you could say NEO is particularly cheap, and, and Polestar is even cheaper, but you know there are just thoughts here. And Desmond is saying, I didn't hear nearly as much about this Evergrande sale. Guess it's not headline worthy. Yeah, look, Desmond, you know, you get a lot more clicks with with, with horror than with good news. And I, I know that because I, I come up with headlines every day and I have to stop myself from making them sound scary. It's not really my style, but it does work. I mean, you do see it. There are, there are certain channels out there who literally make a video every day that's the end of the world is here everything is going to collapse run hide and it works it works really really well uh, our psychology responds to fear uh, much much more than to good news but i do think it's good news desmond and I, I think you were with me on the page there that we thought evergrande wouldn't get bailed out but they also wouldn't let the whole kind of system and economy behind it collapse so that's what we're seeing here which is 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 very good uh, wayne is saying i prefer pole star to lucid one has already been delivering cars for years and has tons of experience the other is just starting production when yeah i i sort of see your your view on that especially when we compare the valuations of uh, one's twice the price as the other uh, the fact that they have delivered 20,000 cars or thereabouts. I think they're aiming for 29,000 by year end. I've just gone through the investor relations, uh, the investor presentation. And the fact that they can just say, okay, let's build SUVs next year in the US and we're going to do it at a Volvo plant. Uh, that's, of course, an advantage of being part of that Volvo Geely group, which they can, uh, you know, if you're completely new, complete startup, you haven't got that luxury. But it seems to me Polestar is still outside of the group enough to come up with some pretty unusual looking cars and some pretty great designs, which is which is great. So, uh, Darren, thank you very much for liking. Can we get the likes to 100? That would be marvelous. Imagine what that will do to confidence out there in the market. Uh, and so thanks for, for smashing that like button. I do very much appreciate that. Now, let me look through here what you threw out. And I'll show it to you as well if you've just joined us. I'm super happy to do recaps, so just ask me for them. I'll do them. So we've looked at Barber. We've looked at Neo. We've looked at Lucid. Um, in no particular order, I'm going to jump onto Palantir here. Palantir nibbling at uh, little contracts from the government here or the, and there, which is it's, it's positive. Uh, I don't think the Evergrande stock chart is particularly relevant for Palantir, so let me take that off. The 7.7% sell of yesterday was just, to me, just madness. I, I don't really get that. Was there a big insider sell? I haven't seen a notification yet, uh, possibly. But um, I think partly Kathy Wood's selling. It seems to unsettle people. Uh, did they sell some more? Let's have a look. I didn't see it in the email this morning, but so... Yesterday, 
we went from crikey that's small no no 27 to 28 they didn't they didn't do any trades so no 23rd was the last one they sold it's funny how this news gets out with sort of this kind of couple of days delay and, and then people kind of really jump on it so on the 23rd they made those trades which was a five percent day up and then the next day 0.7 percent down and then we lose like you know 12% the next two days. Uh, we are still over $25. Pre-market, we're up 1%. I think this was just generally yesterday the um, the sort of worry about what if the U.S. government shuts down? What if the U.S. government actually defaults on its debt? Uh, then, um, you know, it doesn't really matter what you hold. Everything is going to be down uh, in the dumps. Apart from gold, perhaps, uh, crypto would probably skyrocket. Uh, and I think that's probably about it. Perhaps certain commodities, any kind of safety haven. Uh, the U.S. dollar would certainly collapse. Uh, Euro would shoot up. Uh, the sterling would shoot up. So you'd have all sorts of economic massive problems where, you know, Europe and the UK could no longer export because their currencies are suddenly worth twice as much. China would lose most of its foreign reserves because they are all held in the US bonds. Um, you know, maybe that's the intention. Let's hope not. Uh, you know, so they're, 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 they're the knock on effect would be absolutely catastrophic. It would really literally destroy the financial system that we have. And I think those dingbats in Washington do realize that. Uh, and they are still playing politics with it. And they don't care that they rattle the market. Uh, I, I think it's just self-serving nonsense. And it, you know, it means also they get to be on TV every day. Everyone's hanging on their every word, right? They're suddenly very, very important uh, for these couple of days and probably a couple of weeks. They're probably going to come up with some sort of half a job by, by Friday or Thursday, and then they're going to kick the can down the road and going to revisit it every few weeks. So um, Elias is asking about the 10K delivery numbers. Uh, yes, somebody did ask about that, but I gladly repeat it. So Essentially, where we are with, with that is I f there was a link to it. There was a source on Chinese social media, and I clicked on it, and the link is no longer available. Let me see if I still have that open. Yeah, I do. Here it is. This is the page. Uh, it's it's on uh, xshuqing.com, and it's no it's been deleted. So that's no longer available. Now, we what we do know, and if you are on my, my Patreon, you can always access the new delivery uh, trackers here. And essentially, what we know is that for Q3... We were given a guidance here of 22,500 to 23,500 numbers. And that was only about two weeks ago. And that means we should be getting deliveries of 8,600 to 9,600 cars in September. That was the guidance given about two weeks ago. So I have every reason to believe that should be true because when you correct your outlook, which is what they did, and you lower your outlook, you should normally do this at a fairly conservative level. Because if you get caught out twice reducing it, and then you disappoint, people really will lose patience with your predictions and, and, and you lose uh, credibility. Uh, so therefore, I think these numbers are, are conservative. So they must have had chips and parts, I think, for at least 8,600 parts about two weeks ago. So therefore, I think we are likely to see a number somewhere above 8,600. Is it going to be 10K? I think who knows? There isn't really a source for it. It'd be marvelous if it, if it was. It's credible in the sense that, you know, Neo does like to under-promise and over-deliver uh, some of the time, or, you know, they like to do it all of the time, but they haven't always managed to. So it's possible that they want to give us a, a five-digit number here, which would be great. Uh, there are, however, still known supply chain issues with the, the chip side in Malaysia. And also we've had power shortages, which we know it's affecting Tesla's production. We know it's affecting lots of factories across the country. And there have also been COVID interruptions. So, you know, I'm sort of in, in between. Of course, I'd love it, but I, I don't know if it's happening uh, sort of guaranteed. Basically, there is no source, <laughs> no real source. Uh, one thing I did, though, if you watch my Neo video later, I'll explain to you how you can widen these trading ranges. So uh, what I was looking at before was sort of a, a, a range of, say, $3 for us to make money. So in the green zone, we make money with this options trade. You can widen it. You can, say, move it up a dollar, and you just lose a little bit of the top end of the profit, but you increase your probabilities. So that's, this can be quite a good thing to do. And the way you do that is on the, the sort of pyramid straddle here, we have both the call and the put that we sell. Sorry if you're not into options. A brief one. 
both at $35, which was close to the, the current price. Whereas with this setup, we um, make the call lower and the put higher. And that basically widens our base uh, where we are in the green, where we are making money. So there are some interesting things you can you can do with, with options. Uh, and, and for that, if you want to know a little bit more, I do encourage you to take, the, take my free options course. It's completely free. And the link's down below. Uh, and it's fun as well. And we're building a community for the free options course as well. So, so do check that out. Uh, uh, Abby Chappie, welcome. I, I hope Mr. P is right. Absolutely. Uh, let, let, let's see. Um, Andrew is asking, okay, and, and I do appreciate I, I owe you some more stocks to go through, which we will do. Um, so we've kind of covered these here. We're going to run through a few of the other ones in just a second. Let me just take one Andrew's question here. QQQ and TQQQ. So TQQQ is a, um, a uh, leveraged version. So it's it's called Ultra Pro, so it's leveraged. Um, don't buy it for the long haul because you'll lose money. Uh, leveraged ETFs, not really a good idea. Leveraged bond ETFs, also not a good idea. Uh, why? Because you lose more on the way down than on the way up. So if your market zigzags sideways up and down 1% each day by day 1,000 or something, you have no money left. And that's a really important thing to appreciate about that sort of leverage. Uh, Desmond uh, is asking about Japan's new PM. Desmond, I, I, I saw the headline. I haven't done much digging on that. He seems to be a sort of uh, middle of the road kind of a guy. I think with Japan, there is always more stimulus <laughs> coming. I think that's just the way the economy rolls, which is sort of where I worry the US is heading. Uh, John, you couldn't find the pre-mini options course. Uh, with, with this link here, felixfriends.org slash free options, let me type it in here, felixfriends.org slash free options. Ah, hang on, I, I need to do that on a, on, a, on a different browser, otherwise I'm locked in already. Uh, let me just check it for you. I, I've seen literally 30 people sign up to that today or something, so I do think it's working, but I just want to make sure... It is. So here it is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you can just click here on sign up either with an email or if you have a teachable account already, you can do it with that too. Uh, literally just click on that. So take take the link that I posted here. That definitely works. And you can join literally hundreds and hundreds of people who've taken that, uh, that offer app already, which is brilliant. Uh, Cyrus, good morning to you. Thank you for your email, Cyrus. Uh, Cyrus sent me a very interesting and entertaining email. If you want to entertain me too, you can. I'll write my email out as well. I do really love hearing from you, uh, genuinely. So I should probably put that up on, in, in, in every video, but I, I, I'd forget. So take advantage of, here's my email. Literally every any kind of vaguely finance or personal finance or investment related question you have, do ask and shout out. Uh, so if those of you who've just joined, the Barber story is that CCIC, which is the biggest investment bank in China, said that they expect Baba to miss earnings. That's not great. In, Bar in Hong Kong today, uh, the 9988 ticker, which is the Hong Kong listing of Baba, was down 1.7%. Uh, Nick has just bought 90 shares of Baba. Uh, I do agree with you there on the great value. I'm at the moment uh, doing options trades, though. You know, why not just sell puts, for example? Uh, because if you get it cheaper, you get it cheaper. Otherwise, you get some free revenue and you can buy more Baba. At least that's the way I'm, I'm looking at that. Let's go through a few more of these other stocks here. Um, X-Bank, PayPal, Mu, C, and so on. Don't be shy. Feel free to th shout out some more and... What did I do there? There seems to be some shortcut that I wasn't aware of that changes the display. I should probably look up what that is. So here's the chart again. Here's a, a Micron. So Micron's kind of been bobbing sideways. Sort of every time we get a bit of positive momentum, we go down a little bit, uh, up a little bit, down a little bit. So hang on. There we go. That fat green line I've just put in here is slightly above the zero line for, for momentum. So we are essentially at a moderately zero-ish momentum for, for, for them. And that just is also what's reflected up here. 
uh, earnings were out yesterday. I haven't listened to it. I haven't watched it. I haven't read them. They seem to be positive, but the market didn't love it. And that happens quite a lot with earnings. Uh, what I would really recommend if you are into Micron, listen to the earnings call. Look, it'll, it'll take you like half an hour of your life. And if you are short of time, just listen to the last 20 minutes, the, the Q&A se session, and you learn a great deal from that. Uh, I, I don't see much of a trend here, though, on, on, the, on the chart at the moment. I think it's just bobbing sideways. At the moment, it's 2.5% two, two down pre-market. Uh, where do we have some support here? At sort of $71, there is fairly decent support levels uh, here. Uh, and that's essentially that point here on the 20th and then also on the 8th. There might be some more. Okay, market's just opened and it's... What's it, what's it doing? 2.5% down. Let's look at SE, C Limited. Uh, they also, like much of the market yesterday, were sold off heavily yesterday. I wouldn't read too much into that. At the moment, we are heading up already at the beginning of the day. Um, I think the market is just jittery this week. We, we had bond yields rising to 1.55, but they've come down again. So there isn't really, you know, the, the headline this morning on, on CNBC was... Um, it was, you know, bond yields are, are are rising, markets are falling, and you know, I looked at the futures, and the opposite was the case. Why? Because people like CNBC sleep, uh, and they they don't know. So I don't know why I can't seem to open a bond chart here. Okay, here's a, here are the bonds. Ah, oh, crikey! What they've changed their website. Uh, where are the U.S. bonds? <laughs> where did the U.S. bonds go? Oh my God! What have they done? Uh, okay, we're gonna have to type it in. That'll be easier. Uh, U.S. ten-year. So that's at the moment. Oh, crikey! That's not right either, is it? What's going on here? So they've obviously done some upgrade to the system, and nobody told me. Uh, but when I last checked, it was it was sitting below 150, 140 something. Uh, one actually 151 at the moment. Here's the right chart. Uh, 151. So down today 1.8 percent because the market is going to calm down. I think. And I think as soon as Washington reaches a, a solution to their impasse, to politely describe that nonsense that's going on there, I do think these these are going to come down again a bit. Let's look at the next stock you threw out, which is, and I've lost my whiteboard again. <laughs> uh, okay, XPang was one of them, I, I remember. So let's have a look at XPath. Uh, and XPath is, yeah, not a pretty chart. I mean, you really don't want this kind of a chart. It really is just moving down in, in a fairly narrow band here, which is really not marvelous. And it continues to do it today even more. Uh, we've gone through our 100-day moving average line, which is that orange line here, and we are still seem to be in, in free fall. There isn't any real fundamental news to this, uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, there are some negative headlines out, but there, all, there always are. Uh, Lee cut their guidance, as did Neo, so I think people are a little bit concerned about that and th their delivery numbers. But I, I just think... The market tends to tends to overdo it a bit. So where is our support here? Our support is really at thirty three dollars, and to some extent, but there are two support lines essentially. I'm going to put them both in here. One at thirty four seventy, and we're just below that, and then one at about thirty three ninety. And so these two green lines is kind of where I would see support. We're below the first one, which isn't marvelous. Uh, so it's a possibility that we might go into the $33 range here again. Though the volume yesterday on the sell-off wasn't the greatest. So if you look at if you look at this volume bar here, it's it's less than on the green day before, which sort of implies it isn't actually massive, massive selling off here. But definitely there isn't anything particularly uh, positive happening here either. Uh, Exxon is asking, could you do a recap of the Evergrande bailout gladly? So what's happening with Evergrande is the following. Uh, if Evergrande said that you should hit the like button so that Felix keeps talking. Uh, just kidding. Uh, the Chinese government, through a state-owned enterprise, is 
buying a share in a bank that Evergrande had. So Evergrande has lots of uh, equity interests in addition to its property. Uh, then, uh, So they own a stake in a Chinese bank that's worth a billion and a half US dollars and it's being bought off them indirectly by the government essentially. Uh, and that's good. And that's the kind of bailout that I was expecting. It's a bailout without bailing out Evergrande. You're just looking at Evergrande and there are, you know, Lots of bean counters all over China are looking at everything Evergrande owns and saying, look, these are good assets. We could buy these through a state-owned enterprise or state-owned bank and pay you cash for them because the private sector isn't really that keen on dealing with Evergrande. Or if they are, they want massive discounts. So it makes sense. Uh, you know, There's no real harm in the state owning a bit of a stake in a bank. They own most of the banks already anyway. And therefore, Evergrande gets a billion and a half. And they can use that to pay off whoever they need to pay off and, and, and start to settle some of the bonds. So that's one and a half billion US dollars of cash flow, which is good. And it's a sizable amount. I expect there will be more of these deals uh, on their non-property interest and also on their property interests. So uh, Batuhan is asking, what's the, the chart you're looking at here? Uh, this chart is, uh, is um, TradingView. I'm going to type it in here for you. TradingView.com. I'll type it into the chat. Uh, Simon, no, Barber isn't reporting today. Uh, Barber is reporting at the end of the month on the 29th, as far as I'm aware. But CICC came out today saying they expect Alibaba to miss earnings. Uh, so basically to miss my, the, the, the street's estimates, which wouldn't be good. Uh, but I, I still haven't been able to find out why they say that. But CICC is the biggest investment bank in China. It's linked to the um, the sovereign wealth fund of of the government, so they they tend to know what's going on uh, pretty pretty well. Let me see what. Let me just find our notes here for the other stocks that you were asking about, and I will run through them. One second, I'm just going through my my forever increasing in size notes here. Uh, where, 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 here we go. So we've looked at XPang. Okay, so the big, uh, we've looked at C, we looked at XPang. Uh, I think we looked at Mu. Uh, let's look at PayPal briefly here. So the big US tech stocks were selling off particularly hard yesterday, uh, down 4% on PayPal. Uh, did I buy some today? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Why? Because I do whenever it dips and it's significantly below the 100-day moving average line. And for me, a bit like QQQ, that's a buy opportunity. So if you look at, you see the orange line here, that orange line is the 100-day moving average line. Uh, we are rarely below that. Uh, here we are again. And, and obviously in, in May, we were and I am joined by uh, my chief analyst. Uh, here is Chalula. Hello, Chalula. She does all the research around here, all the hard work. I just do the talking. So this is where all the research stems from. Um, so for me, these are opportunities. I think the market tends to overreact. It, it likes doing it. Uh, there's nothing that's fundamentally changed in the, in the business of PayPal. Uh, just because we're going to get tapering, we've known we're going to get tapering for some time. Uh, we also... I'm not really that surprised by the Washington haggling. And I think there will be an end to it at some point, probably tomorrow, uh, possibly on Friday. If it's, if it's tomorrow, it'll be good for the market. If it's Friday, tomorrow will be a bit of a jittery day again. Uh, but yeah, we, we get these spikes. And I think it's, for me, these are buy opportunities. And same if you look at QQQ, you know, how often does that dip below the 100-day moving average line? So it's the orange line in here. See that orange line here? That's the 100-day moving average line. We dipped below it in May, in March. And those were fantastic buy opportunities, I, I, I think. See, here we did it. We did it in May, and then we haven't done it since. We also did it in November very briefly, but it doesn't happen all that often because, really, the whole sector just keeps rallying up. Uh, rugby for Life is basically saying, uh, he thinks or is asking, is this kind of 40% increase in equities uh, unsustainable? Uh, well, there's one thing you have to bear in mind is that money supply. And I don't know if I can pull that up here. Um, I think I can. 
There we go. Can you see that additional orange line I've just put on there? Let me change the color of that so it's a little easier to see. Let's make that red. Is red good? I think red's good. And let's make it nice and fat. That line up here, up here is the money supply. And what the United States government, in, it, in all its wisdom, has done in, in March, they decided to increase the amounts of US dollars in circulation by 20% uh, and, and counting. Uh, so we went from a money supply of 254 to 430. So 430 minus 254 is 176 over 254. So we are up 70% in terms of money supply M2. And I know people will argue about velocity of money. and We don't need to get into that. Just This is sort of a simplified version of, of what's going on. And, and that, of course, has a lot to do with it because this money goes somewhere and money seeks returns. So money goes into the best, better assets and then into, it trickles down into all rubbish assets too. So the question, I think, therefore is, do you think the government, the United States government, has the 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 balls for lack of a better word to turn the tap off and to let the market correct by say 25 30 percent cause therefore cause a recession cause a housing uh, crash which means negative equity for lots of people which means they owe more than they than they uh, have equity in their houses uh, and, and and all of that which would lead to a further recession and less spending and a, a, a debt crisis and a you know, credit card crisis and all that sort of stuff. Do you think the government wants to do that? In the past, 20, 30 years ago, possibly, yes, they could have accepted the boom and bust. But we no longer do the bust, we only do the boom. So I think what's going to happen is, yes, I think there will be a market correction, and then I think the Fed's going to start print, printing some more money, and, and, and this, this gravy train is going to keep running. Uh, is it sustainable? You know what? Who knows? It's a crazy world we live in, but I, I think that's the reality. I don't think anyone elected to office is willing to be the one who crashes the market, so they're just always going to go for more stimulus. Uh, Genie X, uh, you are correct. The 1st of October is a public holiday. It's National Day in China. Uh, I expect that they will still still release numbers because why not? Uh, so I will definitely be the first to let you know. So make sure you tune in. Uh, rugby things that surely can't be keep going. Well, uh, you know, let me pull up another chart here. Uh, hang on. So this is the, the, the Nikkei since 1985 or thereabouts, right? Which has been basically China had its, sorry, Japan, <laughs> excuse my, my, my uh, uh, Freudian slip there. It, so this was the great, great Japanese rally and then Japan got sort of crushed and they started really printing money in the 2000s. And then since 2008, we've gone from 7,900 on the Nikkei up to 29,000 marvelous return. And they've been printing money for, you know, 20 years, basically. Uh, and, and it's worked. Uh, are they going to stop doing it? Unlikely, the new government is likely to keep doing it. Uh, what's, what's, it what's it done? Well, their debt levels are kind of crazy. Yes, they are. But they the government can... In theory, as long as the world believes that a government can pay the coupons on its debt, on its bonds, a government can issue debt, its central bank can buy the debt and pay for it by printing money, and interest rates stay very, very low, and, and this train goes on forever. Uh, you know, it, this is the new monetary world we live in. It's the opposite of what I was taught at uh, when I studied economics, but it is, it is where we are. So is this a sustainable? Who knows? But I think you can definitely keep, keep going because Japan has showed us what to do. Uh, and and Michael and, and and rugby there yeah I, I agree with you I think this uh, this modern monetary uh, theory theory or whatever they, they want to call it is essentially keep printing uh, that's that's the solution to everything and whenever there is a little bit of a dip you keep printing uh, eventually it'll cause more bubbles and more problems because the banks will realize or they already have that this is happening so they will do riskier and riskier things uh, and you will create some bubbles that'll just pop 
which likely will cause the government to print more money, which means you will create more bubbles, which will again need to be bailed out. But you can keep doing this. There is no real reason why you can't unless the world believes the US can no longer pay for its debt, which I don't think is where we are. So uh, th thanks for, 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 for asking those questions. So we should buy Bitcoin, says Chris. Well, it's, it's a thought. Uh, also, one of the reasons why, of course, governments don't like Bitcoin, because it would create a parallel system. It undermines their power and they don't like that. So, you know, watch out for lots of regulation on, on, on Bitcoin. But yes, you know, commodities, Bitcoin, alternative assets. I think, I think it makes sense to have some of it. Uh, it's just Bitcoin or all the cryptos but are particularly volatile. So I wouldn't have uh, most of my assets in it because then I would never sleep again. Um, and Desmond, you're completely right. You actually, Desmond, Desmond is basically saying that debt, as long as debt is in a currency that you can print, you can keep printing it as long as there's someone who will take it. Desmond, you don't need someone who will take it. Your central bank will take it. You basically walk across the road and you say, tell them, I'm auctioning this off tomorrow. You have to have to buy it. Now, if you got to a point where the US issued debt and at the auction, there was only one bidder and that bidder was the Fed, that would start to undermine the belief in U.S. treasuries. But so far, there are always multiple bidders. And, and you know, uh, again, you create lots of money. Banks need to put it somewhere. So they're going to put their, get their hands on some treasury bonds. David, can you trade options from the U.K.? Absolutely, you can. In our lovely community, let me pull up for you what most people are using. I'll show it to you. Uh, so, well, where are we? Here we are. <laughs> I'm confusing you. Uh, so, there is. If you are in our actual master stocks uh, options trading course, there is a, a massive sort of handbook with that. And part of that, I re record the options brokers that most people in our community are using. In the UK, most people are using either Tastyworks or IG. Uh, IG here. Uh, let me make that a bit bigger for you. So those are the, the most popular ones in the UK. Of course, you can. Uh, and, and if you want to get your, your, your dip your nose or your toes into that, uh, do check out the, um, the free options course that I've got on here. I think that's a great place to start. Uh, and yep, is, is hodling Ethereum, ADA, uh, Litecoin, and some, some Bitcoin. And I think, yeah, it's, you know, you can see the appeal when you look at these sort of charts and see what's really g g happening here. Uh, Keith is asking, will this crash eventually? Look, Keith, you know, we, we just don't know. I mean, Japan is really the only example that we have where a government has done this now for, for decades and it hasn't crashed the economy. Uh, you know, there are still people willing to buy Japanese bonds. In fact, they've made quite a recovery of late. Their real estate has done pretty well the last five, ten years and, and the economy is doing reasonably well. And it's a lovely place to live. It's a beautiful place to be in. Huge, wonderful, high standards of living and, and everything functions. So, you know, you, you can do this. Um, the, the question is just, yeah, nobody really knows what happens at the end of it or if there is an end of it. It's just... It's just not what we were taught. Our, the old economic theory was boom and bust, right? Those were the, the things that we were all taught. Well, not all, but those of us who, who suffered through economics uh, degrees. Uh, Chris, um, welcome uh, to joining us on your lunch break. What's the good news? Well, the good news is um, Evergrande is getting more bailout money from the Chinese government. They've sold a stake in a bank they hold to the Chinese government, essentially, through state-owned enterprises, injecting a billion and a half US dollars into Evergrande, which is good news. Actually, it's renminbi. It's not US dollars. They're going to receive renminbi. Uh, but it will at least help them with cash flow to either complete some projects to get more cash flow in or to be able to pay off and settle some of those bonds. Um, Desmond, Desmond's asking a very Cantonese question. He's asking, what's for lunch? <laughs> Thank you, Desmond. Um, 
Uh, David, uh, yeah, do check out those brokerages. I mean, you can also use others in the courses. I, I use a lot uh, for uh, Think or Swim as well because they've got great paper trading accounts, which I really recommend. But once you're on there, you, I'll explain all that to you. So um, Chris is enjoying some sushi, which is great. Uh, Rakmi for Life says, your grandmother has £100,000 in her bank account for the last five years. Yeah, it's. I think it's difficult to get people to move money out like that. I get emails every day from from people, which I do really appreciate. And, and often they have to say the same, th same thing. It's my my wife, my brother, my my, my parents, whatever. And I, I sort of try and, and, and give them some information that might help them along the way. So if you have any such thoughts, do drop me an email. I, I love hearing from you, felix at goatacademy.org. I will definitely reply you usually within within 24 hours. Um, there, it's very. I think with an older person like that, I'm assuming a grandmother is is an older person. It's quite difficult because it becomes an emotional issue. They, she probably just feels safe knowing it's there, and she doesn't care that that loses a significant value every single year. So, uh, what can she do that will be better? That would make us still feel safe. And, you know, some people, it's just, it's just, it's just having cash. It just is what makes them sleep at night. And if that's what makes her sleep at night, then that's the right choice for her. Even though financially, of course, it's a, it's a disastrous decision. AA, I have a little bit of crypto. Yes, I've got some Bitcoin. I've got some Ethereum, some ADA, uh, and, and a sort of a smattering of a bunch of other ones. It's not a huge part of my portfolio. Uh, because I, I, I personally think a, a sort of single digit percentage is a, is a reasonable thing to, for, it's a FOMO investment, not an investment, it's a gamble because we don't know how it's going to turn out. Uh, I can see the positive in it, but I can also see the risk that it might just get outlawed or something. Um, uh, Chris, uh, the, the Neo rumor, at this point, it's a rumor. There was a post on, on Chinese social media, but the post got taken down. So we don't really know. The guidance was 8,600 to 9,600 cars. So 10K is feasible, right? It's only 400 cars more, but we don't really know. Um, am I adding to crypto with the current market? It, personally, no. I, I haven't. I haven't of late. Uh, AA. Uh, I, I can see the appeal. And of course, when we get to these discussions with debt ceilings and so on, that certainly plays in, in, into that narrative. But you also just have to see the massive ups and downs. And I, I the choice for me is, you know, putting it into a highly profitable uh, U.S. company with a great big moat and, and lots of uh, margin or uh, putting into something that's entirely speculative. So I've kind of, for the moment, done my speculating and, and my FOMO buying there. Uh, Rugby for Life is asking, what's the next great industry? Uh, throwing out AI, 3D printing, orbital manufacturing. I, I do think uh, anything that makes manufacturing substantially easier and, and 3D printing and everything that's related is, is definitely that. So I, I definitely can see that. In AI, the challenge I find is how do you really know who's better than everybody else? Does this become another pharma industry where we just have no idea? So I think an ETF approach might be, might be wisest here because it's pretty hard to really understand that unless you happen to be working in this sector. So that's kind of the, the, the challenge with this. Whereas, you know, cars, it's a little bit easier, isn't it? It's a little bit more physical, be a little bit more, more used to that. Uh, John, do you hold any NFTs? Uh, no, I don't. You know, I really looked into it for quite a long time. I was actually starting to make, wanted to, to make my own and I sort of looked into the techie side of it. It's fascinating. I also was looking at it from the art point of view because it's a huge point thing in art and I, 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 I do uh, sort of, uh, you know, abuse some oil paints now and then. But I, I don't. I think if I was going to buy it or if I was going to give it a sort of advice on it, which I don't because it's all entertainment, uh, I would say buy only the rarest and buy only the really collectibles. And that means that whoever issues that must be a household name. Um, so not some cute looking Japanese kitten or something because it's just not a household name but say a um, you know an NBA player who 
got the greatest record ever, or you know, massive sports stars, uh, you know, Elon Musk, those kind of type things. You know, those things I think have a chance of going up in value because you need to think about it. Will this still have relevance in ten years' time? Will anybody know what this cat is? Uh, so if the answer is yes, and it's exceptionally rare as in there is only one, then yes, I think it could be a really good investment just like art. Those things tend to be pretty expensive. So again, there are funds starting to pop up for this where you can own a fractional share in them, which I think could be uh, interesting. Uh, okay, let, let's do a quick Neo recap here. So there is a, and I'm putting a video out on this after this as well, because I, I thought this was going to be a pretty big topic. So Mr. P, who is a, a YouTuber, he's, he's a chap in China who drives a Neo, uh, does very interesting videos on, on sort of Neos generally. He put out a video yesterday saying there was a leak from somebody in sales at Neo who said they've already delivered 28,000 cars as of the 28th, which was yesterday. And that would give uh, two more days uh, to, to deliver some more cars. There was a link on social media to some sort of post. That link has been taken down. I, I, I can show it to you if you want to see a dead link um, and see what that looks like. Uh, I, here it is. Here it is. Activity has been deleted or pending review. It obviously said that in Chinese originally, but I, I hit the translate button. So here is the original. Now, is it possible? It's possible. We were given guidance, this is what I'm highlighting here in blue, of just about two weeks ago that they would deliver 8,600 to 9,600 cars this September. So delivering 10,000 isn't out of the realm of possibilities, right? That's only 300 and a bit more. So therefore, it's feasible. Though bearing in mind that we have a power shortage in China, which is affecting Tesla production, we still have a big issue with the semiconductor uh, chip supply chain in Malaysia. Uh, there's been COVID popping up here and there. It's not necessarily the gr most likely outcome, but it is possible. I'd be thrilled if it happens. It would be the sort of William Lee type thing to do, I think, to give us a big month after a poor month. They did a similar thing in, if you remember, May was particularly disappointing here, 6,700. And then in June, we got 8,000, which we've never had before. So it might be similar that we got 5,8 and that we then get 10,000 in September. Uh, either way, I think the market will be happy if we're near the top end of the 9,600 range or, or thereabouts. Uh, Exxon, the, the holiday in China is the first. So if the Friday is the holiday, so they have a full month to deliver. It's just the 1st of October is National Day. Uh, and Chris says, quoting Robert Karowski here, yeah, if it's, if it's uh, speculation, absolutely. That's exactly what this is. Um, and, and, and Raymond, I'm not saying Mr. P is right or wrong. I'm just saying that his source is not exactly like, you know, the most sort of gold-plated source that we have. And AA, okay, you're buying physical precious metal metals. Uh, I've never met anybody who bought palladium before. That's interesting. But certainly platinum, gold, silver. Um, yeah, I, I get the point. I have some gold bar lying on my desk usually somewhere. I don't know where it's gone. It's, it's gone off wandering. I, I think there is some sense in holding a little bit of it, again, as a hedge. Um, I think being diversified is, is, is always good. You could think of a scenario where, say, the lights go out, right? Say if power goes out, then our we wouldn't have access to our bank accounts. ATMs wouldn't work. We wouldn't be able to do transfers. Mobile phone systems would fail and, and, and all that sort of thing. So what would you pay with? That would be a real question. So if you have some gold coins or smaller gold bars, you could certainly find somebody who's got some cash and at and, and, and least do something with that. So that's for me sort of the way I see that. I, it's not so much as an investment as, as a sort of, uh, you know, the end is near hedge. Um, so... <laughs> buy uranium next, John. Okay, don't do that, please. Uh, Chris says maybe Winston took the gold, but I, I hope not. Uh, he, 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 he is uh, known to pick up most things. In fact, the reason he isn't here is because I took him out earlier and he decided to jump into a fountain. Uh, he thinks fountains are not for decoration, but for swimming in. Uh, so he's, he's soaking wet. Otherwise, I would have brought him up. 
so I, I, yeah, I, I only own gold. I, I don't have anything else. Um, it, just some 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 gold. Uh, and and Chris says Mr. P is pretty reliable. Yeah, I, I think he, I think he is is certainly a well intended uh, YouTuber. He's not your sort of uh, shouting crazy stuff kind of a guy. So it it might well be true. Uh, we certainly hope it is. Ha. Uh, okay, rugby. Uh, if you want to talk YouTube sound, seriously, send me an email. It's it's the most painful part of being a YouTuber. So uh, I think you might have my email, but here it is, Felix at Goat Academy. I I'll gladly give you some some sound advice there. I'll give you my sound guy as well because he he'll he'll fix it for you uh, in 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 a flash. Uh, you can play with mics and setups for weeks, which is what I did, and there was always background noise. Uh, so let me give you give you the the shortcut to that. I'll, I'll I'll gladly do that. So just drop me an email to Felix at Goat Academy, and I'll hook you up with my sound guy, and, and he'll fix it for you uh, from a distance, and he tell you what tells you what equipment you need and what you don't need uh, and, and what's wrong with your setup in your room and so on. Uh, Jay, I think options are, uh, are, are during office, office hours, so to speak, during market hours. Uh, so I don't think there is a pre, I've certainly never traded pre-market options. Um, absolute pleasure, uh, Rugby, just drop me an email. Uh, oh, Raymond. Okay, I I I, I promised to look into STEM, did I? And I haven't. Okay, crikey. Uh, I'm 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 in the bad books here. Okay, let me make another note here uh, to look into STEM. STEM AI. Would you drop me an email as well with whatever you've dug up on it, and then I'll I'll, I'll take it from there. That'll save us both some time, and it'll it'll stop me from telling you what you already know. So d drop me an email on STEM. And 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 I'll I'll definitely look into that and I'll see what I can add to that from the sort of subscription services and things that I have as well. And George, yeah, Palantir bought fifty million physical gold, and I think that's the same sort of thinking. It's kind of like, well, if we had that, we could certainly uh, pay staff or uh, you know, kind of keep the lights going. Uh, we could certainly issue some IOUs that would have some physical backing, say, if the US dollar does collapse. So say if the guys in Washington um, you know, don't take their meds and, 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 and crash the US economy, then gold would definitely be a great thing to hold. So, um, okay, you guys having a bit of a chuckle there on, on, on Stockmo's research. Uh, I think it's also his cats that do the research, right? <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to read out uh, some of those comments here, but they are very entertaining. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of where we are. Let's have a look at what, what the market is doing while we've been uh, nattering away here. Let me look at the market screener here of most of the stocks we look at. Not pre-market, but actual market. Lucid really uh, bouncing up on the news that they are actually going to deliver some cars at the end of next month. Uh, right, I think, being dragged along with it. Uh, and then we're seeing just a nice recovery here in stocks like Xpang, Neo, uh, Apple up, Tesla up to 788. You know, when are we going to hit that 800? Coin is up, a bit of a Bitcoin recovery, I presume. QQQ overall is up 0.8%. Uh, PayPal is recovering. Uh, what's down? Okay, Chinese education stocks, that makes a lot of sense. DD as well. Uh, volatility, SoFi down a bit. They issued some debt, right? I think that's, that's, that's what that's about. Let's have a quick look at, at SoFi here. See what, um, launch the full chart. Yeah, 750 million private offering convertible senior notes. So these, this is a dilutive if, event, right? So those notes will in 2026 become stocks. So that means uh, that, that's why, why they're down a bit. People don't love that kind of thing. Uh, John is saying, I'm hoarding, not gold, but knowledge. I'm setting you up for your class promo segment, John. I, I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, I, I do recommend you take the free options course because why wouldn't you? You'd learn quite a lot and it's a lovely community and you can also ask me lots of questions and I'll send you quite a lot of information in addition to those lectures out there. If you are more serious about your investment journey, then join 
us and me on this journey, we have two journeys. We have one building long-term stock wealth. So really just compounding to fabulous uh, sleep well at night wealth uh, that makes us very, very wealthy. That's what the Master Stocks course is all about, how you value companies, how you pick good companies, how you diversify, how you uh, read charts and, and, and economics and much, much more. And then if you are more a little bit more aggressive and you want to create passive income in addition, which is a good combination with a stock portfolio because you can use the margin there, then um, options trading is the way to go. So if you really want to learn options. There are more than 100 lectures in there. And there's, of course, also a private Discord chat group with that where you can chat with me every single day. You can also always reach me via email, felix at goatacademy.org. I love getting your messages. I actually don't get that many. You know what? I really don't. And I would like to get some more. So send me some emails and make it sure you, if you do enroll in the courses and when you do take advantage of the 29% off coupons there, build wealth. I'll put my email on the screen here again as well. In case you missed it, felix at goatacademy.org. I will reply you within about 24 hours, uh, unless you send complete gibberish. But uh, so far, everybody is, is just sharing a bit about their journey and uh, and sort of what their concerns are and what they're doing and what they've tried out. And, and I think it's just good to have, whether it's me to talk to or our community to talk to, uh, it helps us make some better decisions if we just get some different input and thoughts from, you know, I, I've made decisions that have been terrible and I've learned from them and I kind of want to just pass on that knowledge. So, You guys, what are you chatting about? All sorts of things. Well, I appreciate you tuning in. I'll be live again tomorrow, same time, same place. Hopefully, we'll have a good day today. If Washington does sort out its mess, that's going to give us a nice little bounce, especially in the big techs and so on. So I am buying. Um, I, I have already this morning. So thank you for tuning in. Let me know what you're doing. Uh, get in touch via email or Discord or Facebook or whichever uh, drug of choice you like to use for communication. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one tomorrow.